stoplight intersection like this and been baffled? Well, I have. This stoplight could remain red the entire day. But when a car pulls up to it, it's as if it knows something that I don't. And it turns green as though it was magic. When you look into how this works, it's actually pretty interesting. So let's explore it. Right. When it comes to the sciences, you can't learn everything about any one thing without pretty much learning everything else in the entire world. So I'm going to be fairly general when it comes to explaining the concepts behind the operation of the stoplight sensor. Let's talk about inductance. In simple terms, all inductance is is the presence of a magnetic field around a wire through which electricity is flowing. And the magnetic field rotates around the wire. You can determine which way the magnetic field is rotating by knowing which way the electrons are flowing. In conventional schematics, electricity flows from the positive to the negative terminal. However, in real life, as you probably already know, it flows from negative to positive. Now, in relation to the flow of electrons, the magnetic field will rotate clockwise. So if this is my handy dandy wire and electricity is flowing from the bottom to the top, you can use something called the left hand rule to determine which way the field is rotating. So I point my thumb in the direction of electron flow and I wrap my fingers around the wire, my fingers demonstrate which way the field is rotating around the wire. Here we have a switching power supply, a radio, and a hand mic, and a compass. We can see that the radio is currently drawing 0.2 amps at 13.8 volts, and whenever I key the microphone, the power draw increases significantly. Right, so we got this uh, spinning magnetic field around a wire with current going through it, which is cool. So what if we were to take a portion of the wire and turn it perpendicular to the direction of electron flow. Well then, we have a little, you know, loop-de-loop, -loop, so to speak, doing this number. It's, the loop-de-loop -loop is like a wheel spinning parallel to the direction of electron flow. And if we were to take a section of wire and coil it, well then we have multiple segments of wire in, you know, a 360 degree structure that have the loop-de-loop -loop going around it and all those little small loop-de-loops add up to one big magnetic field parallel to the direction of electron flow which is the basis of one of my favorite electrical components inductors as you can see an inductor uses inductance and a coil to produce a magnetic field this may look strikingly familiar to you. It looks a whole lot like an electromagnet. And as it turns out, an electromagnet is one of the most common applications for an inductor. So here's my coil. Here's my power source. Now I'm gonna enhance the strength of my field with this uh, piece of metal. And we'll see if we can't make the magic happen. They're also used in integrated circuits like computer chips and radio oscillators and all kinds of interesting gadgets because they resist changes in current. Oh yeah, here we go. These little guys, there they are. It's pretty glorious. When voltage is first applied to the system and electrons hit this coil, they begin to charge up this electric field. I'm sorry, excuse me, this magnetic field and no electrons are making it to the positive terminal of the battery. It's as though there's a delay in the system being turned on once you apply voltage. And similarly, once the field is completely charged up and electrons are flowing through smoothly and you remove the power source, 
the field starts to collapse and current continues to flow through the system. So it's like there's a delay when you turn it on and there's a delay when you turn it off. So we know that the magnetic field is created and sustained by the flow of electricity, but we can make it bigger. Oh yes, but it'll cost you power. The most straightforward way of going about this is to simply increase your power. But another way to do this is to add more coils to the system. But that isn't always practical. Another way to go about it is to introduce a conductive material into the system like iron or ferrite or name your favorite conductor. Here are a few inductors with conductive cores. And of course the conductive cores are designed to increase the inductor's inductance. Right, when we add a conductor to the system, it has free floating electrons, so it has the ability to amplify the magnetic field. And the most efficient way to do it is to put it directly in the center of the coils and everything, but you know, you can't really fit a car down there, but you can park a car right over top of it. And when you do that, you introduce the conductive material to the system and you increase your power draw. And that, that is how your car is detected. So in a nutshell, a stoplight uses these long inductors inside the asphalt to detect whether a car is present or not. Essentially, the car parks over top the inductor. The magnetic field then includes the car because the car is made out of conductive materials. And as the field begins to grow, the current of the system is altered. And a sensor can detect that and determine what lane a car is in. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about stoplight sensors. I know there's a bunch of different little concepts that go into it, and I didn't really cover any of them in depth, but I hope nonetheless you're inspired to either learn or create something cool from what you've learned here today. Don't let me down. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.